In this scenario, we are going to see how engineering and manufacturing can collaborate around the product definition. That will be the engineering definition or what we call as well uh, engineering bill of material, as well as the manufacturing definition, which will be the manufacturing bill of material. So this is the workflow uh, demonstration. We have two uh, Innovia and Delmia roles. We're talking about the product release engineer, which is an Innovia role, and the manufacturing items engineer, which is a Delmia role. And uh, we will start by showing how we can develop uh, engineering definition using the product release engineer. And the, our demo scenario will be around a drone. We will be focusing on a specific part of the drone, so we're not going to show a complete uh, design or uh, definition of uh, the drone. Uh, but we will start showing the capabilities that we can do, uh, that we can have in the application which is used by the product release engineer in order to define what we call engineering definition. And later on, uh, we handle uh, this work to the manufacturing engineer in order to start working and developing and validating the manufacturing definition based on the engineering definition. So the second part will be uh, the manufacturing items engineer who will review the work that was done in the engineering and validate that and based on that will be up, uh, updating the manufacturing definition. Now at this point, um, because of a clash that was found between one of the components of the drone and the uh, assembly station that will be used to assemble this drone in the manufacturing shop floor, the manufacturing engineer will uh, not continue uh, working on the manufacturing definition. He will mention the, the, this clash back to the engineer and that will require a new redesign of the support of the camera. And that is the part that has a clash uh, in this uh, assembly station. So that means that uh, the product release engineer now needs to review and he needs to re-update and define again that support in order to make sure that it will be correctly uh, working and uh, the clash that was found earlier will not be there anymore. So there will be a replacement of an old component with a new component and finally this will be validated by the manufacturing engineer and this is where the work will be uh, completed by simply updating the manufacturing bill of material and completing the task that was originated by the product release engineer in the first place. So let's see how this works. Uh, so here we have the engineering release app. As you can see, I have the engineering definition on my left, left side, which is a set of uh, the engineering items. And I can select uh, engineering items and I can see a cross highlight with the 3D on the right side. This way it gives me a good visibility of these components. It's a structure definition so I can see the complete structure of the, uh, of the assembly. And every time I select engineering item again it will be highlighted in the 3D. So we have two views. We have the usage and we have the reference view which will allow me, the reference view allows me to uh, have a look at the total quantity of, of uh, each reference, which will be all the instances of this uh, reference. And I can also analyze <coughs> this engineering definition based on the maturity state, for example. So if I want to focus on, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the components which are frozen, I simply select uh, frozen here and I can just focus on them. So the system will filter the list and will show me only what has been selected in the tagger. Okay, now I go back to uh, the complete uh, definition here. And now I can add, uh, for example, a new engineering item. This engineering item will represent, for example, a label. It's a component which has, um, uh, which is a label that we will attach to uh, the drone assembly definition. And we can update the title, the description, and so on. So it's a very easy way to create engineering items directly from, uh, from this uh, interface. And uh, then uh, we describe uh, uh, this label, for example. And uh, another capability in this uh, widget is the ability to create enterprise item number, which is the official item number in the organization. So with one click, I can generate automatically uh, this enterprise item number. 
And I can also create engineering items which will represent the consumption of core material. For example, if I have an oil uh, quantity which I want to add as part of the engineering definition, I can use this capability. I'm adding here an oil, uh, for example, uh, zero. Uh, eight liter of an oil and that will represent this uh, liquid in my engineering uh, definition. So this will be the consumption of uh, this liquid material inside the engineering uh, definition. And in a similar way I describe this, I add a title and description and I save uh, this new engineering item. Now we can also uh, define uh, the alternate components, I'm now focusing on the strap. We can see it highlighted on the right side. And I want to define what will be the alternates of this component. So the al alternate can be related or relative to the parent, any parent where this strap exists. So that will be the first option I'm, I'm using here. The second option is that, well, uh, this strap may have another alternate which is only relevant in this assembly all instances of this current drawn. So this will be the second option I'm using. So I have here a definition of alternates which apply to this engineering item and that depends also where this engineering item exists as a child of a parent. Now let's focus on the camera and that will be our major focus today. Uh, so the camera has different components and I want to describe now the manufacturing intent of the support. So we can see here the components of uh, the camera. There is a support component and as an engineer I may decide that this support is something we want to buy from external provider for example. So I'm going to the manufacturing uh, definition inside the engineering definition and I create a new manufacturing item of type buy. Okay, That will be uh, as of type provided part. So this will be a component that we will be purchasing from uh, external source. And that's uh, currently this component does not exist on the level of manufacturing bill of material. It's only attached to this engineering item. And now I want to collaborate with manufacturing. So I create a collaborative task and I'm asking the, the manufacturing engineer to start working on the manufacturing bomb, the specific one that has been attached to uh, this engineering definition. So I will assign this manufacture, this uh, collaborative task to the manufacturing engineer. And I will also uh, need to attach this engineering definition as a context in this uh, task. So this way I'm telling, I'm telling the manufacturing engineer to which engineering definition I am referring to. So that, that will be the context of uh, of this uh, collaborative task. So this way we are collaborating on the same context, on the same uh, engineering definition. So the moment this is saved, the manufacturing engineer will be receiving a notification. So this is the first notification that uh, the manufacturing engineer uh, will receive around this uh, engineering definition. So he goes to the task and we see there is a task here to be uh, worked on. So the first thing we do when we receive a task is to review the task content, understand what was the intention of uh, the engineer that assigned the task to me as a manufacturing engineer. And I take the context, I drag it into my widget. And my widget is my manufacturing items management. So this is the engineering definition, but I need to work on uh, the manufacturing bill of material. And there might be more than a single one attached to this uh, engineering definition. Now we can see the 3D as well, which makes it easier to understand. And uh, I want to go to the relation. I see three manufacturing bill of material, but I will focus on the one of France that was re uh, requested in the collaborative task to focus on this one and to work on the manufacturing uh, bill of material of France. And I first analyze the work analyze this manufacturing and engineering and I can see here that there is a manufacturing item that was not assigned to the engineering definition. So there is something to be done here because the engineering have created maybe a new item and, uh, and I need to develop uh, the manufacturing bill of material for, uh, for this content. 
So now, before we deal with that, let's first uh, do some restructuring here. Restructuring means that I'm taking uh, some components and I'm changing their positioning inside uh, the structure. This does not change anything in the engineering, but it is something that is required for manufacturing purposes. So I'm going to create a kit which will combine different screws. So let's call it um, manufacturing screws kit, for example. And I'm going to make some selection of these screws. I simply drag them and drop them into this new kit. Again, for manufacturing purposes, this is a way we can modify the uh, <clears throat> the location of engineering of the manufacturing items inside the emblem. Okay, so I have done this. This is something we can uh, always update and do in the manufacturing uh, bill of material. And now I want to check what is behind this uh, engineering item. So I can see here there is one manufacturing item that represents the camera support. Okay, so let's understand if this is a make or buy, what type of item it is. Uh, so I am reviewing now the properties of this uh, manufacturing item and I see it's a provided part, so it is a buy type of item, it's not a manufacturing assembly. I want to make sure this is something that can be uh, manufactured, so I'm trying now to um, get uh, help of uh, another application which is 3D markup. I want to understand if this support can sit correctly in this station without interference or any clash between the support and the tool that will be used in order to make this assembly. So I can I notice here that there is some kind of issue. Seems to be that there is a clash between the camera and the tool that will hold the, this whole uh, camera assembly. And that seems to be coming from the support. So by visual analysis here, I can highlight uh, this clash and I can annotate, I can put some uh, remarks here for uh, the engineer to tell him, well, there was an issue here with the design at that specific uh, location. And I am highlighting also the part that is causing the issue. So this markup is something I will collaborate with uh, with the engineering. So I take this, I drag it into the task, and I attach it. So now it is visible also for uh, the product engineer to, to understand what was the issue. So now we can see that uh, it is available as attachment to the task. And all I need to do now is just to write a small comment, uh, which is some kind of a chat between me as a manufacturing engineer and uh, the product engineer to explain what was the issue. So I'm explaining that we did some analysis here um, and a clash has been found. That means that the support has to be redesigned and we will need to manufacture it internally for some manufacturing uh, purposes or manufacturing reasons. Uh, so there is a need to do some changes back in the engineering definition in order to apply the work to the manufacturing um, environment, let's say. So this way we can see the collaboration here, the manufacturing stopped the work, so no, there is an issue here, and it goes back now to uh, the engineering uh, product engineer in order to enhance the work, or enhance the engineering definition. The engineer now receives a notification because of this comment, so uh, the engineer will go directly to the task, and he will review that there is a task, uh, there is a, a content or a comment that has been uh, uh, written by the manufacturing engineer explaining the problem. He says, okay, the first thing I want to see what is what was found, what is the analysis that was done by the manufacturing, and here we can see the clash uh, by taking a simple look at the 3D markup, and it's clear there is a clash here between uh, the camera and uh, the tooling uh, assembly station and uh, the manufacturer, the in product engineer can also add some more content here. For example, we're just putting here some short uh, uh, highlight here to say, okay, I understand the problem. And now let's assume that this work, uh, this support has been redesigned. So now we want to replace the old support with a new one. So we simply right click and we replace by existing support and we look for the support that has been uh, designed and simply we replace the old one with the new one. So the new one should be uh, working better in, uh, in this uh, machine and if I drag it we can see it in 3D so there is, a, there is some difference between the old one and the new one. 
And now I need to um, define, okay, this is going to be uh, a make because we will manufacture it internally. So I'm creating a scope link or uh, creating a manufacturing item that will be related to this engineering item. But this manufacturing item this time is going to be of type make. This is something we need to make internally. And <clears throat> by that, I finish my work. And again, I go back to the task and I communicate the work that I've done as a product engineer back to the manufacturing engineer to explain that we have created a new design and uh, we have attached also manufacturing assembly to this uh, new engineering item. Okay, so now the manufacturing engineer, engineer will receive this uh, new notification as we can see here. He reviews uh, the task again because now he needs to take the updated uh, engineering definition and add it to his, uh, to his widget or to his application. Uh, because the old one has the old support and the new one has the new support that needs to be uh, uh, updated from manufacturing point of view. So again, as before, we drag and drop uh, the context back to the manufacturing view. So this way I am sure I'm working on the latest and greatest of the engineering uh, definition. And uh, again, we, meet, we need to be sure we are working on the right manufacturing bomb. So we will take uh, the right related M bomb, which is called uh, France in this case. And that's the one that will be uh, updated in this scenario. So again, I run uh, this analysis to understand the difference between uh, what has been created and not yet assigned between engineering and manufacturing. And I can see the support, still not something that we have assigned in the manufacturing. And this manufacturing item, we will review the properties to make sure now this is correct. So the first thing we see in the properties that it's a manufacturing assembly and that was the original request of manufacturing. So this is good. Number two, I want again to um, uh, analyze this uh, from 3D by again taking this into uh, taking this uh, drone as a whole into the uh, assembly station, and we will see that in this assembly station now the drone fits well, or the the support and the camera they fit well. well. Uh, the tools that will be used for the assembly of uh, this drone. So it's okay. The new design seems to be done correctly. And now I confirm that I want to use this manufacturing item into my manufacturing bill of material. The one that was created by engineer by the engineering, I will add it automatically through this drag and drop into the manufacturing bomb. And the system will automatically assign uh, this uh, engineering and this manufacturing item to the M bomb. And by that I have completed my work and I simply drag and drop the task and the work is done.